In this video we want to look at small to medium size enterprise, the so-called SME sector. The interest in small businesses was really started back in 1971 with the Bolton Report in the UK. Uh, before the Bolton Report there was more emphasis on growing businesses and getting businesses into a, a very large size and uh, governments were thinking along very large businesses competing internationally and there was not a lot of talk about small business. What the Bolton Report did was it showed up the importance of small business in the economy as a major employer and as a major source of innovation, change and one which is flexible and almost the core of the economy but one which was ignored from right from the start. But ever since 1971 and the Bolton Report it's uh, become uh, a major area of study and research and countless reports have been issued since and uh, countless academic papers uh, published on the theme of small business. Bridge and O'Neill uh, give a definition but the definition is in different parts, in three parts to be more precise. Uh, firstly they see a small firm as one that has a relatively small share of the market and we can go with that, we, we can accept that because uh, small businesses do tend to have small shares of the market but we're dealing here in relativities, we're dealing here in uh, situations that we can find uh, examples to the contrary. For example, let's say um, a, a small business which is a restaurant, let's say, in a small town. The small town cannot support two restaurants, it's too small. So it has one restaurant. Now, it's a small market um, it's a small business, a small market in the small town, a small business, the restaurant. But the restaurant in that case has 100% of the market. So it has 100% share of the market. It's the only one. It's a monopoly in a sense, a spatial monopoly. So we can imagine it uh, being uh, of that format. We, we can imagine points bid in, 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 that, uh, in that way. But what Bridge and O'Neill is saying, which is I think what we go with, is simply that small businesses have small shares of the market. In other words, they are small. They're small businesses. That's all we, we need to stick with. We don't need to be too sophisticated about that argument at this stage. We just simply say they're small businesses. But they have got other attributes. For example, uh, they're generally owned and managed by the same people. And they're run in a very personalized way. They don't have a formalized uh, management structure. They don't employ in professional managers. They can't afford that. So the owners of the business, the people who set up the business, um, they run it according to what they think is good business practice. So we have now two uh, aspects of the definition. Thirdly, it's also independent in the sense that it does not form part of a larger organization and it's free from outside control in taking decisions. So it is autonomous in the sense that it does not have outside investors or outside agencies influencing the decisions it makes. The decisions are made by the owners. So we have a three-pronged definition put forward by Bridge and O'Neill. First of all, it's a small business. 
and don't worry too much about the complications about the market share but it is just a small business and what we mean by small business is I agree complicated uh, do we measure small business in terms of profitability or employment or uh, how do we measure smallness but I think if we, we just leave that aside for the moment and deal with that in other videos uh, what we've got here is simply a small business a small business being the owners and perhaps a few people helping the owner to produce some particular good or service secondly the uh, the small firm is managed by the owners and is managed in a personalized way the owners do everything the, there are no specialized managers there's not a, a manager for marketing and a manager for distribution and a manager for accounts uh, all of these functions are rolled into one one person does does all of them they may outsource some of it for example the accounts may be given to a local accountant to do uh, marketing they may get seek advice from uh, a marketing agency but by and large they don't have the resources to imply specialists so the owner will do everything and they don't take uh, opinions and, and suggestions from outside uh, at least they don't take them if they don't want them so there's no outside agency who is influencing their decisions their decisions are more autonomous they are their own decisions about the direction in which the business should move so we have three parts to that definition now the main characteristics of small businesses well independent entities managed solely by the owners so they're independent uh, they're not owned by other organizations and they're managed solely by the owners the owners are the people who are in, in effect the management team they, they are one and the same so the owners make the decisions financing capital is provided by the owner or a small group of owners by and large when the business is set up it's the owners who invest in it it's the owners who pay for the assets and pay to get it started sometimes they may borrow from the banks but perhaps the borrowing is secured against their homes they believe in the idea so strongly they're willing to risk their homes that if the business fails they might lose their their home so finance and capital that is produced uh, through negotiations with agencies perhaps like the banks at the start it will also involve them putting their own savings into the business and bringing the business into existence the business tends to be local and business operations take place at a local level sometimes we know of businesses that are local but uh, seem to operate on a national level as well um, and this is particularly important in the context of electronic business uh, electronic business can be uh, positioned anywhere uh, but they operate on a national level they could even operate on an international level uh, but it's um, they don't have to have uh, a presence in a major city or uh, in expensive premises so we can have paradoxically very small businesses operating at a national level because of the impact of technology employees of the business live local within the community the reason for that is very simple to reduce costs to reduce traveling time but the employees tend to be recruited from the local population the size of the business will be smaller in industrial markets compared to larger organizations um, that may seem like a, a truism but 
in industrial markets uh, sometimes larger firms will encourage the development of small businesses associated with its product for example component suppliers or suppliers of specialist uh, uh, materials and the larger firm finds that beneficial because they're able to have security of supply but also they're able to speak directly to the manufacturers, the small businesses in other words about the product and about issues of quality or issues of design or changes in design so it's in the interest of the larger organization in industrial markets in particular to uh, be associated with small businesses and sometimes in uh, uh, these, these situations we may have a large business with several small businesses associated and the large business is its single or their single customer. The size of business is measured in terms of sales volume, profit, growth, number of employees, core competencies, resources and capabilities. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, measure small business. It's something we, I think, we have a feeling for rather than having a, a, a very strict definition. Uh, if we could define um, a business as having few workers, and we could put a limit on, say, five to twenty workers, something of that nature, now we say that's a small business. Uh, but it could be a very profitable business. So if we were to measure uh, its size in terms of profitability, it may not be a small business. It may be quite a significant business. Um, so our definition of size is complex. Here we're getting away with it in the sense that we are saying that small business is a small business but we're not getting into the definition of smallness. We can measure smallness in terms of sales volume, but if each item sold is high value, but they only sell one every week or every month, in terms of sales volume that might look very small, but in terms of profitability and sales revenue that might be a lot. So we have to be careful about how we define size and that's the subject matter of other videos on the course. Now the benefits and challenges of SMEs. Start with management structure. Small businesses lack management structure. Control remains with the owner or a small group of people. Now, whether that's a, a benefit or not is difficult to say, but it is out of necessity the case with small business. Small businesses generally cannot afford to employ a large management team, uh, particularly a, a large team of specialists. Limiting control can avoid conflict and enable the uh, business to make effective decisions and avoid meetings and procedures in large management structure. So it has got advantages being small. It doesn't dissipate its energy in a lot of meetings and a lot of discussions. It, uh, it simply gets on with the job. There may be regular meetings but perhaps once a week or once every couple of weeks. Uh, they, they don't need to have a very formalized structure. It's not so bureaucratic. And that leads to efficiency and uh, fast response to, to issues as they arise. They're able to uh, flex and bend very quickly to circumstances. So if the customer wants a change in the order or a change in the, the design chances are they're able to do that fast and that's the advantage of the small business. 
larger organisations may have to have uh, consultations and uh, discussions with engineers and uh, prototyping and there may be a lot of extra procedures to follow with larger businesses which will slow the whole process down. One owner uh, may not be skilled or experienced in every element of the business. Lacking in knowledge can have a negative effect on the business. Um, it's to be assumed that the person who set up the business will be skilled in the production of the item, will understand what the, the product is, will understand the, the market for the product and who is involved in the market. And this research will have been done before the business was set up. Sometimes smaller businesses are better positioned if there's more than one one person involved at the startup if there are a few so that they can go through some type of division of labor they can uh, allocate tasks amongst themselves and at least focus in on those tasks and try to to get the business running not so much one person doing it but perhaps a small group of people doing it and that will give them a better um, platform to launch the business. The, the benefits and challenges of SMEs, well, learning opportunities. Most owners of small businesses learn on the job and acquire their skills and knowledge through experience from self-employment. So SMEs are uh, a good way of learning the, the trade, learning the business. And it's also a good way of learning business itself, how to manage a business in general, because all of the uh, issues that affect larger businesses will be felt in smaller businesses to a greater or lesser extent. So the small business person will still have to do marketing, will still have to do product design, will still have to uh, do distribution and invoicing and uh, do the the finance and the banking and will have to pay resources and at the same time keep an eye on cash flow so that bills can be paid. So there are many functions to be undertaken within the business and it, the, it's, it's a, a learning by doing uh, experience for many small business owners. Business owners may uh, have a deep knowledge within their field, however lack a broad objective view of the business. Hence more people are needed to bring in new experience and talent. So once the, the business is set up and once it's running then uh, the aspiration presumably will be to grow the business but also it will be to bring in specialists from the outside who will have a better view of uh, perhaps marketing or of personnel or of uh, finance we have better view of technology whatever it is so it'll free up the owner to concentrate on other parts of the business but it'll also lead to more efficiencies within the business which may promote growth in the long run So it's a very informal system and the procedures could be in very informal within large sorry within within small business many small businesses do not put formal procedures in place as they are run by one person or a small group of people they don't necessarily have very strict procedures they tend to be slightly more flexible they want the employees in at a certain time and leave at a certain time. They've got core hours of work, uh, but they may not monitor in great detail. They may not monitor uh, a lot of the business in great detail. They, they focus in on problems when they arise and try to solve the problems. Uh, other than that, they try to get the business running 
as fast and as efficient as they can. But they don't have formal procedures. They don't have committees and meetings and uh, report back sessions and minutes of meetings and because maybe it's only one person involved. Maybe it's just the owner. The owner is the manager. So he or she cannot have a meeting with him or herself. So it's more informal and also the employees can speak to that person perhaps in a far easier way than if they'd worked in a larger organization. In a larger organization they might have to book an appointment. In a small business they can just speak to the, the manager or the owner who is available on the spot. This benefits the organization as everything is focused on one business goal. So the the organization is just focused on one thing, growing the business, surviving, growing the business, expanding, uh, getting the business secured so there are uh, some many outlets for its product, not just one, so they're not vulnerable. And as I said earlier, their energies are not dissipated through bureaucracies or uh, procedures. They're able to focus on the core objective of getting the business to grow, getting it secured. Formal procedures tend to come into play when the business makes rapid growth. This makes it difficult for employees and management to implement control as there is an informal culture. So when businesses grow, the informality is reduced. It becomes more formal. Uh, different sections of the business will start to work almost like small departments and start to grow into the departments. Eventually some person will have to look after each section and that person will eventually become a manager. And at that stage the small business has grown up has grown up to be a larger business and it will have much more formal procedures. Investment. Well, capital investment into the business tends to be the owner's personal savings. At the start, a small business may be started by, by a person who simply puts his or her savings into the business. It may be that they are willing to borrow on their assets, borrow on, on the house, get a secured loan from, uh, from the bank. Um, the early phases in setting up the business are very risky. Many businesses fail in the first year or first couple of years and this means that uh, the entrepreneur and that's really what we're talking about here. The entrepreneur has to be confident that his or her idea will be a success. If they believe that, then it's worth moving forward. Sometimes there's a reluctance to invest and expenses are restricted to bare essentials. Often um, entrepreneurs in trying out an idea will try it out on, on a very basic level just to see what would happen. They're trying to test the idea. Um, sometimes they don't have that opportunity to test it in practice so they may seek consultation and, and advice from uh, colleagues and friends and even from professional sources as to whether the idea sounds good. Uh, is, is it a good idea? Is it one that could work? Tends to be more focused on short run gains rather than long run strategy. Well small businesses don't really have the time to engage in, in a lot of thinking about the next five to ten years. They're more interested in surviving the next couple of months. Uh, they're more interested in trying to build a business now. So they tend to be more focused on the short term. 
uh, the long term will look after itself. Uh, as John Maynard Keynes, the famous economist, once said, in the long run we're all dead. So we just focus on the short run. And that seems to be the case with small businesses. They try to focus in on the short run, fix any issues in the short run, try to keep the business running in the short run. And in the long run it'll sort itself out. But once the business starts to grow, then they may start to turn to looking into the medium term and into the long term. But that only happens once the business starts to grow. And when departments have been set up within the business and specialists have been brought in and so it, it starts to form a larger business. But as a small a small business they tend to deal with the here and now, deal with the issues that are confronting them right now and try to get the business to grow and solve any problems and uh, cultivate the market. So these are some ideas about small to medium sized business that we, we need to take into account. And uh, the source that we used, I uh, mentioned earlier, was Bridge and O'Neill and that's the reference. But that's all we're going to deal with in this video so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.